News and Rescue Command Center. This is Y News with Angelo Castro III, Jerry Alcantara, and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. The Davao City Government is commissioning the service of a local artist for a project related to last Friday's Deadly Blast. Victor Cosari will tell us why. Ruth Merecido, a masseur, was laid to rest today. She was among the 14 casualties during last Friday's bombing incident in Davao City. Other fatalities of the bombing incident will be laid to rest this weekend. Among them is Salvador Reginaldo Nagal. According to her older sister, when they heard of the incident, at first, they could not accept the fact that her brother was already dead. Ang nasa isip ko is, yung ano na buta namin, nangasuban ko, baga yung ano, nandun na siya sa tabi, kumbaga parang in shock ko lang. Pero at the time na dun yung ano, nabuta namin, parang, parang gusto kong mag, ano, magwala. Kasi hindi ko alam paano yung nalamdaman, no, parang umiiyak, pero walang luwa na lumalabas. Parang nagigigil ka, nanginginig sa, ano, sa galit. Parang, they hope that the perpetrators of the crime will already be apprehended and justice will be served to the victims. They also hope that authorities will beef up their efforts to avoid a repeat of such a tragic incident. Innocent na nadamay sa ano, sa walang kabuluhang ano, reason. Sabihin mo natin may rason sila pero bakit innocent yung dinamay nila. Na iba naman yung kalaban nila, bakit dinamay pa mga innocent. Meanwhile, the city government plans to put a permanent memorial marker on the blast site. For now, what can be seen in the area are plenty of candles and flowers from the Vauenos who are also one with the victims in seeking for justice on the incident. I already directed uh, the city administrator to um, commission a Davao artist to design the permanent memorial marker. Salvador Nagal's sister is not against the idea. However, she reiterates that the memorial must not serve as a memory of the tragic incident, but for them to recall the happy moments with their loved ones. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Davao City. The Philippine National Police announces some changes in the way authorities should conduct checkpoint operations. Leia Ilagan will tell us why. Expect more police officers and soldiers at checkpoints nationwide. The Philippine National Police, or PNP, says this is just one of the changes the public can encounter at checkpoints following the declaration of a state of national emergency on account of lawless violence. PNP Directorate for Operations Police Chief Superintendent Camilo Cascolan explains soldiers will help the police in conducting inspection of passing vehicles at checkpoints. The security forces will also be guarding the streets nationwide round the clock. AFP and PNP should be visible on the streets, in the checkpoints, so that people will see that they really are being secured and uh, we, are, we care about their safety. Cops are now allowed to open the trunks of passing vehicles but only with the driver's consent. Hindi mo namin pwede kayong pilitin na buksan niyan. Pero pinakamaigi ho talaga buksan niyo kasi kung hindi niyo mabubuksan, yung amin namang suspecha na baka meron ho kayong tinatago naman po dyan sa kompartmento. PNP appeals to the motorists to cooperate and not be frightened because they just want to ensure the safety of the public. The National Police also reminds the public to always keep in mind the new regulations being implemented at checkpoints across the country. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. AFP Public Affairs Chief Colonel Edgardo Arevalo advises inspecting personnel at checkpoints that they should carry out their tasks in a professional manner. Brian De Paz will tell us why. Military personnel should carry out their tasks in checkpoint in a calm, courteous, and professional manner. Inspecting personnel are reminded not to touch or open any vehicles or order any occupant to alight. Checkpoints must also be well lit and personnel manning them must be in full uniform. 
AFP Public Affairs Chief Colonel Edgar Arevalo says baggage can only be inspected if the owner or passenger gives permission. The colonel added that failure to comply with these reminders could result in the filing of administrative sanctions and even criminal liability. Pakala mo, ginagawa mo palang trabaho mo, automatic, naging inspection ka, binuksan mo yung pinto, all of a sudden, you will be slapped with uh, administrative and civil charges simply because she's not uh, within the allowable acts. The AAP appealed to the public for cooperation in the government's endeavor to suppress lawless violence and prevent the spread of similar violent incidents in the country. Brian De Paz, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Aguinaldo. A couple who was previously a subject of PNP's Oplan Tokhang was arrested by operatives of the National Bureau of Investigation in Pasig City. Roderick Mendoza tells us why. Operatives of the NBI Anti-Drugs Division arrested this couple who is suspected of maintaining a drug den in Pasig City. NBI identified the couple as Marcos Castaneda Jr., alias Dodong, 42, and Alma Castaneda, 35, who is 7 months pregnant. NBI agents spied at the couple's house in Lindaya, Corner Diaz Street, Pineda, Pasig City, before serving the search warrant issued by the Manila RTC. Authorities seized four sachets of shabu and various drug paraphernalia. According to an NBI informant, the couple has been maintaining the drug then for at least four years. In fact, uh, the information also that uh, we received that they have been uh, the subject of uh, Oplan Tokhang by the PNP was affirmed by no less than the barangay official of that place who assisted us in the implementation of the search warrant. The couple denies the accusation but admits using Shabu. Alma says she did drugs twice a week. She adds that she has been using drugs for a long time, making it difficult for her to quit even when she is already pregnant for seven months. Mui na po ang probinsya para mag-ano lang po, doon na po mga anak to magbago na po kami roon. Sabi kaso, nagpa-check up po ito doon sa probinsya. Sabi ko, saan daw po siya nagpa-check up dati, doon daw mga anak. The couple will be charged with violations of the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act. NBI will also coordinate with DSWT regarding Alma's condition. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. A Chinese national and his five Filipino colleagues have been sentenced to life imprisonment by a port in the province of Zambales. Monokson tells us why. A Zambales court has found a Chinese national and five Filipinos guilty over a 2 billion peso illegal drug case. The accused were slapped with charges after authorities caught them carrying kilograms of high-grade shabu in a van during a raid in 2013. Chinese national Albert Chin and his four Filipino colleagues, namely Escueta, Coronel Dicierto, Emmanuel Erwin Tobias of Pasay City, Dennis Domingo of Antipolo City, Rizal, and Romeo Soriano Manalo are now facing life imprisonment. Recon or appeal? Pwede kami mag-recon. Ang iba, kasi nila, apat na abogado kami rito, lima. Gusto nila, there is appeal, baka naman ay tumagal. Meanwhile, a bail petition was filed by four Chinese nationals who were caught in a floating Shabu laboratory by the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency and Philippine National Police last July. Una, nag-file kami ng motion for bail. So, may kami, ng, uh, may kami sa korte na payagang magpiansa ang mga kliyente namin. So, binigyan kami ng judge ng tatlong hearings. It can be noted that the Department of Justice filed charges in July 13 against Sina Win Fai Lo, 42, Shu Fok Lium, 49, Kam Wa Kwok, 47, and Kwok Tung Chan, 29, for violating Sections 11 and 8 of the Republic Act 9165, the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002. The fishing vessel allegedly used by the suspect as a floating shabu laboratory was intercepted in Kalapandayan, Subic, Sambales. Authorities said about half a kilo of shabu was confiscated from the vessel. 
The bail hearing of the accused Chinese nationals is scheduled on the 4th, 18th, and 25th of November at the Regional Trial Court of Olongapu City. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Producer Alan Dison is in favor of the plan of the Quezon City Police District to look into entertainment personalities using illegal drugs. Grace Cassian will tell us why. Producer and actor Alan Dizon supports the Quezon City Police District or QCPD in their plan to look after artists involved with illegal drug trade. Dizon says there should be no special treatment for artists using illegal drugs. This after the QCPD sees need to look after artists buying ecstasy and other party drugs after the arrest of Philip Mendoza Salonga in a bypassed operation. Salonga is allegedly a half-brother of popular singer-actress. In a distribution matrix of the QCPD, Salonga supplies ecstasy and other party drugs to celebrities previously arrested by the police. QCPD Director, Police Senior Superintendent Guillermo Elessar says they will investigate celebrities who are dealing with the suspects. Based on their arrest, tingin namin makakuha pa tayo ng ibang leads for uh, subsequent operations. We all know, we believe na ang mga client nito is so ito yung mga well-off or mga we can say celebrities or we can say kumbaga nasa uh, upper bracket ng ating society. Meron ba kayong mga bibigyan mga artist na? Mga kailan ng personalidad? Wala, ng trust ko natin lang. The QCPD recovered 80 pieces of ecstasy and other ported drugs worth 120,000 pesos from the three arrested suspects. Bars in Quezon City is the next target of the QCPD. Grace Cassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Next, in Y News. President Rodrigo Duterte is in Indonesia for his second working visit abroad. The Department of Transportation confirms that the agreement on the LRT-MRT common station will finally be signed this month. Y News will be right back. are now experiencing moderate to heavy traffic on both lanes of EDSA. From Taft Avenue to Shaw Boulevard, Nel Maribuhok is in EDSA. Phil am to tell us why, live. Go ahead, Nel. Darlene, has a long weekend coming in. Motorist on North, or EDSA northbound from Munoz to Balintawak area. Approaching to North Luzon Expressway are now experiencing moderate to heavy traffic. Let's take a look at the traffic situation here in EDSA, especially to major intersections. From Balintawak to North Avenue, vehicles are fast moving, but motorists in front of uh, Trinoma to Film Homes, Quezon City, will experience light to moderate traffic. Approaching to Nepa Q Mark, motorists will experience moderate to heavy traffic also in Cubao and uh, Santolan areas. Vehicles will loosen up in White Plains to Show Boulevard. Let us check out our live points. In Ed's Aurora, going uh, welcome, light traffic situation in that area. Also motorists going to Katipunan area. In Espana, Blumentritt area, going to UST, it's going to be light to moderate traffic. Vehicles going to welcome Rotunda, also light to moderate traffic. In Baclaran, Rojas Boulevard, Going to Manila area, it's going to be moderate to heavy traffic in that area. Going to Coastal, also moderate to heavy. In Edsa, Guadalupe, going to Shaw Boulevard, motorists will experience heavy traffic. From Orense, going to Ayala, it's moderate to heavy traffic. In C5, E. Rodriguez area, from Libis to Makati, vehicles are slow moving. But from Makati to Libis area, vehicles are fast moving. In Letre, Malabon, in C4, Navotas, light traffic situation in that area. And also going to Monumento. And that is our traffic update here in EDSA, Darlene. 
Thank you, Nell. And that's Nell Maribohok reporting live from EDSA, Phil Ang. The Department of Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugade explains to lawmakers the urgency in resolving traffic congestion in Metro Manila by giving President Rodrigo Duterte special powers. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. House Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez took advantage of the budget deliberation for the Department of Transportation to scrutinize the agency's performance. Ngayon, magpe-first 100 days na, wala pa rin nangyayari. Walang plaka, walang lisensya, walang ORCR. Tinitignan ho namin yung posibilidad na kung saan yung pag-imprenta ng lisensya ay gawin na lang government to government. DOTR Secretary Arthur Tugade expressed dismay over the performance of the agency, particularly the backlogs in issuing license plates. But the House leader doesn't see any reason why the LTO cannot resolve the problem. Yung mga immediate concern, no? Kagaya ng ORCR, kagaya ng lisensya, walang mga kaso yan. Pwede na kaagad i-address yung mga problema yun. Also, some lawmakers are against the proposal of emergency powers for the president. Pag hindi po tumulong, you recommend for the suspension. You can do that without any emergency powers. But the DOTR secretary explains the importance of granting special powers to President Duterte in resolving problems like traffic congestion in Metro Manila. Kung meron hong one authority dyan, mas madali yung waswasin, walisin, at bastunin yung mga side street na to. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. President Rodrigo Duterte is in Indonesia for his two-day working visit. Early this afternoon, he met with the Filipino community where he stressed the government's commitment to ensure the welfare of the citizens, specifically by strengthening ties with Indonesia and cooperations against illegal drugs and crimes. The Indonesia State Palace of Istana Merdeka granted arrival honors to the president. After this, President Duterte and Indonesian President Joko Widodo had a mutual talk at Jepara Room, Istana Med Medreka, where they discussed mutual cooperation, especially on the plight of Filipinos in Indonesia. A state dinner is now taking place at the dining hall, Istana Negara, prepared by President Widodo for President Duterte and his entourage. The president is expected to leave Indonesia by midnight and arrive tomorrow at 2 in the morning at the Dabao International Airport. President Rodrigo Duterte remains unaffected by criticisms as he expresses more concern to the plight of Filipinos. Robby de Guzman tells us why. In front of the Filipino community, President Rodrigo Duterte lambasted the media for twisting a statement that placed him on international headlines. But still, the president doesn't mind what the international community thinks of him. Sinabi ko, I do not answer to anybody except to the Filipino people. I'm only responsible to you. He clarifies, however, that he and President Barack Obama did have a brief talk at the holding room prior to the ASEAN Gala on Wednesday. On the issue of human rights, he says he cited the U.S. pacification campaign in Mindanao that killed Muslim Filipinos in the early 1900s to show the world leaders a clear picture of what human rights violation is, which, according to the president, silenced his audience. He believes by doing so, he made his point clear. This is human rights. What do you intend to do? Do not tell me that there's water under the bridge. The human rights violation, whether committed by Moses or Abraham, is still a violation of human rights. In the same speech, the president thanked China for its generosity, specifically for its pledge to help in the country's war against illegal drugs. Contrary to what is expected, the president was unable to meet with imprisoned OFW, including Mary Jane Veloso, due to his tight schedule. The president is expected to be back in the Philippines tomorrow at 2 o'clock in the morning in Davao International Airport. Robbie de Guzman, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Department of Health is planning to put up posters on proper health services in public hospitals. Joanna will tell us why. 
to address problems encountered by the patients in public hospitals. The Department of Health is planning to put posters reminding all hospital staff on how to provide proper health care services. Recently, Health Secretary Pauline Jean Ubial stated that she is also planning to deploy actors who will pretend as patients to check if proper accommodation is given to them. Some of the common problems encountered in government hospitals are long queues and patients that are not able to pay their bills. Patients also complain of not being given fair treatment by doctors and staff in some DOH referral hospitals. Kasi magtatanong ka lang, mga hindi ka nila papansinin. Siyempre, di ba, lalo ko nangangailangan ka talaga ng tulong nila. para naiinis ka, di ba? Sungit mo naman. Sana yung mga may sakit, yung ano, hindi na, alam namin na pagod din. Doktor lang sila, hindi sila robot, ganun, pero mga nurse, pero sana naman maayos yung pakikitungo. According to DOH Spokesperson Assistant Secretary Dr. Eric Tayak, the department cannot oblige all of their doctors and nurses to be amiable when they are on duty. But he assured that proper medical assistance should be given to all patients. Ang importante po rito ay hindi po may hirapan ng pasyente komportable na makuha niya yung serbisyo. Ibig sabihin, katulad ng sinabi ng aming Pangulo, eh... Kahit walang ngiti, halimbawa, hindi ka naman pumila ng mahabang oras, siguro mapapatawad mo na kami. Those who want to report any hospital for their bad service can call DOH hotline numbers at 7111001 or 7111002 and coordinate with health facilities and regulatory bureau. While those who have complaints against doctors and nurses can call the Office of Philippine Regulatory Commission with contact numbers at 311-0026 and 310-1047. Joan Nano, UNCV News and Rescue, Manila. After more than five years, the agreement on the LRT MRT station will be signed this month. Juan Hokson will tell us why. Department of Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugade confirms that the agreement on the LRT-MRT Common Station will be signed this month. Tugade says he met with the stakeholders and had them agree to finalize the project. Tugade met with Ramon Ang of San Miguel Corporation, who will build the MRT Line 7, Manny Pangilinan of Light Rail Manila Consortium for the LRT Line 1, and Augusto Zobel, who owns Ayala Mall's Trinoma. Togadi also confirms that SM Prime Holdings agreed on the location of the common station between SM North EDSA and Trinoma. We tried to meet separately and collectively with all, with all the stakeholders. The last meeting was done yesterday with no less than the heads of the stakeholders meeting with me in, uh, in a private meeting. Togadi explains that they agreed on the intention to not burden commuters in making them walk distantly due to the original location of the common station before. What basically have we agreed upon? Number one, all of them saw the importance of one single station. All of them saw the difficulty of making people walk to do, to do connectivity between LRTs and MRTs. Last 2011, SM Prime Holdings gave 200 million pesos to LRTA for the naming rights of the common station. But in 2014, then the OTC Secretary Jun Abaya decided to transfer the location of the common station near Trinoma Mall. The case reached the court but SM Prime Holdings lost the case. The 200 million peso cash bond is still in the possession of LRTA and will send it back as soon as possible. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Sidewalk vendors in Quezon City are appealing to the local government to give them enough time to find a new place to sell their goods. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. The Metro Manila Vendors Association said they were not given enough time to search for a new place before demolishing their stalls. Nakatanggap kami ng kanyang notice on September 7, 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock in the afternoon na Nagtaka kami, akala, akala namin maayos yung usapan namin na kami ay mag-close coordination. This was after vendors at Filcoa, Quezon City held a protest after being expelled from the sidewalk by personnel of the local government's public order and safety office. 
But Quezon City 2nd District Councilor Rani Lodovica said selling on a public sidewalk is prohibited. Itong karsada po ito, napakasikip po ito eh. Ang dami yung petition dito. At isa ho to sa post ng traffic dito sa Pilcoa. Dahil imbis na yung mga tao nandito sa bangketa na nag-aabang ng sasakyan, nasa karsada na ho. The councillor also insisted that what they've implemented is in accordance with MMDA Resolution No. 02-28 Series of 2002. It is stated that all public places in Metro Manila should not be utilized as areas for vending goods or used to build some structures for commercial and advertising purposes. The local government have also cleaned up the sidewalks at Cubao, Aurora Boulevard and Quezon Memorial Circle. Aside from the sidewalk vendors, they have also removed the illegal terminals of jeeps and AUV. In the end, the sidewalk vendors had no choice but to leave and continue to appeal to the local government. Hindi kami again sa pag-aayos. Ang inaano namin ay iayos natin ang due process. The sidewalk vendors are calling on the local government to give them an area where they can position their stalls so they don't lose their livelihood. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Coming up, a river in Russia turns bloody red, infuriating environment activists. New stars of the Guinness World Records 2017 edition is now available to bizarre seekers around the world. More from my news after this break. A tropical cyclone is expected to enter the Philippine Area of Responsibility or PAR at the east of Mindanao by Sunday night or Monday morning. The Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration or PAGASA says it will be locally named Ferdi once it enters PAR and it might enhance the southwest monsoon next week. Weather in the weekend will be fair after a low-pressure area or LPA crossed some areas of Visayas and Mindanao today. As of 4 p.m. today, the LPA was located at 60 kilometers west of Dipolog City. Mindanao, Visayas, and Bimaropa will have partly cloudy to cloudy skies with light to moderate rains. Isolated rain showers and thunderstorms will prevail over Metro Manila and the rest of the country. A mother of a 5-year-old born with a congenital condition expresses gratitude to UNTV's Servisyong Kasangbahay. Jun Surya will tell us why. Bali po, lumapit po ako dito para po sana matulungan po yung anak ko po na mapaoperahan po. Bali po na ano po siya na yung sa balls niya po ay eh, isa lang po. Bali na ipit po yung sa singit niya. Bali ang findings po sa PGH. Bali ang tawag po nila din is undescended testes. This is the dilemma of Mrs. Windle Bilyan. Her five-year-old son is suffering from a congenital condition called cryptorchidism or undescended testis. Mrs. Windle Bilyan, resident of Quinta Rizal, has sought the help of Kuya Daniel's program, Serbisyong Kasang Bahay, seeking assistance for her son's medical condition and be able to undergo a medical operation. In response, Serbisyong Kasang Bahay has brought the problem of Mrs. Windle to its partner doctor, Dr. Joseph Lee, a urologist. According to Doc Joseph, the condition of the child should be urgently addressed. Now, ang bata kasi, ang testicles kasi, kailangan bumaba bago mag 2 years old. Now, mas magiging delikado pag ang testicles mo o yung bayag na sinasabi, hindi siya bumababa ng after 2 years old. Kasi there is a tendency na one, hindi na natin masasalba yan. So ngayon, eh, pag tumatagal ng tumatagal, wala siya doon sa tamang lugar niya, yung tamang pwesto, which is the scrotal sac. The, the condition that will lead to it is uh, one, uh, malignancy or cancerous. Or ang problema niyan ngayon is pagbata pa siya, eh, infertility. The program Serbisyong Kasang Bahay. Together with Dr. Joseph Lee, vowed to treat the condition of Mrs. Billion's son. Salamat po, Daniel. At si partner Dr. Joseph Lee, maraming salamat po sa inyo, Dr. 
Thank you, Ani. Jun Suryao for Servisyong Kasang Bahay. The South Korean government holds a series of emergency meetings today in Seoul after the latest provocation from Pyongyang. Eric Ferrer will tell us why. Prime Minister Wang Yuan convened the National Security Council meeting and condemned Pyongyang's confirmation of its fifth and largest nuclear test. UN 안보리 결의에 대한 명백한 위반이자 국제 사회에 대한 노골적인 정면 도전 행위로서 정부는 국제 사회와 함께 북한의 중대한 도발 행위를 강력히 규탄합니다. Alongside the NSC meeting, the South Korean Foreign Ministry also held an emergency meeting to discuss countermeasures for North Korea's action. South Korean Special Representative for Korean Peninsula Peace and Security Affairs Kim hong yun said, such action of the North Korean government poses significant threat to the world peace and security and is putting the Korean Peninsula and Northeast Asia into security crisis. North Korea announced on Friday it had conducted its fifth nuclear test. Hours after after a 5.0 magnitude seismic monitors detected a blast near the secretive country's nuclear test site, which indicated that the blast was 10 kilotons in yield, the largest ever conducted by the North. According to South Korean President Park Geun-hye, the latest nuclear test by North Korea proved that the country's leader Kim Jong-un is completely ignoring the world's call to abandon his pursuit of nuclear weapons. Eric Ferrer, UNTV News and Rescue, South Korea. Prague Councilmen create shelter for real metropolitan bee colonies. Meanwhile, an Asian elephant gets a new pair of boots. Marge Navarro will tell us why. In America, like many human beings, Shanti, the 41-year-old Asian elephant at the Smithsonian's National Zoo in Washington, D.C., has been dealing with arthritis for decades. Over time, it has resulted in developing cracks and lesions on her feet. But now the veterinarians have turned to new methods to alleviate pain and try to raise her quality of life by introducing pedicures and new boots. Doing daily pedicures, she gets medicated foot soaks and cold laser therapy. Zoo experts said the treatment has helped with the discomfort associated with her chronic arthritis. The boots also had made a big and positive difference in Shanti's day-to-day -day life. In Panama, the world's largest pure car and truck carrier vessel entered the Cocolai Locks on the Pacific to begin its crossing of the Panama Canal on Thursday morning. The Norwegian-flagged vessel was built in 2015 and is capable of carrying 8,500 cars to its full capacity. The boat, which began its original voyage in Japan, is 36.5 meters wide and was built in China with the most advanced technology and designed with the energy efficiency measures to minimize its impact on the environment. It is the biggest car and truck carrier in the world with deck space of 71,475 square meters. And in Czech Republic, Prague councilmen decided to use the roof of the town hall for a meritorious purpose for keeping the real metropolitan bee colonies. Beekeeper Zenik Ruzika placed at the town hall roof six beehives on March this year and takes care of it every week. The honey is proven for the good quality and is used for representative purposes. Střecha na Mariánském náměstí je přívětivá pro včelstvo, daří se jim tam a my jsme tak rádi, že budeme moci nejen zahraničním, ale i tuzemským návštěvám nabídnout jako dárkový předmět náš med, aby tak mohli ochutnat kapku té Zlaté Prahy. Marge Navarro, UNTV News and Rescue. A river in Russia turns red. Ray Pelayo tells us why. A small river in the northern part of Siberia turned blood red, raising the eyebrows of the local citizens and infuriating environment activists. Residents of Norils started reporting that Daldikan River outside the city changed its color on Tuesday. Russian Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment said in a statement that investigation was underway adding that the possible cause of the disaster was a breakdown of the facilities of the Norils Nickel Company. Norils Nickel representatives denied the information about the breakdown. 
Greenpeace Russia provided pictures from the site showing riverbanks covered in crimson slime. Head of the organization's energy program, Vladimir Tuprov, said Norilsk Nickel bears responsibility for the disaster, adding that pollution seriously undermines natural resources of the region. Это объекты, связанные с добычей минерального горнорудного сырья компании Нурникель, которые содержат повышенное содержание железа. Отсюда и такой красноватый оттенок, или лучше сказать, такой ярко-алый цвет этой реки, которую она приобрела. Все это связано с деятельностью Норильского никеля, компании, которой владеет господин Потанин, которая является фактически вотчиной. И эта река тоже, люди, которые фактически здесь живут, Таймыр. И все это находится под контролем конкретной вот этой вот монополии. Мы теряем рыбный запас. Вот если вот подходить утилитарно, что теряет местное население, экосистема, экономика страны, в первую очередь это, конечно, рыбные запасы. Во-вторых, это питьевая вода, которая уже не пригодна для питья, если мы говорим о жителях, которые здесь живут. Norel Snickel, controlled by Russian tycoon Vladimir Putanin and aluminum producer Rusal, is the world's second largest nickel producer after Brazilian miner Vale SA. The company is also the world's largest palladium producer. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue. Seekers of the Bazaar will surely be amazed in the latest collection of the world's best of the best that is now available in the market. Piching Vizgara will tell us why. Another outstanding year for record breaking. We've been able to pack the new book with 4,000 records, about 80% of which are new. Guinness World Records today announces the release of the Guinness World Records book 2017 that reveals a selection of the most jaw-dropping records and record holders. After months of research around the globe looking for the best of the best, the Guinness World Records presents hundreds of striking new pictures, videos, and fascinating stories. Among them, the largest rocking chair, the fastest monowheel, the new longest domestic cat that measures a whopping 118.33 centimeters or 3 feet 10.59 inches long are the main records from the UK. While in the United States, it's all about the big stuff. The longest monster truck, the largest pitchfork, and the tallest female dog, Lizzie. The Great Dane from Florida, who measures a huge 96.41 centimeters or 37.96 inches tall, are the American winners. The 2017 edition is ensured to bring fun and significant educational content to knowledge seekers of all ages and interests. The Guinness World Records is inviting the public to see more record-breaking wonders. Be available worldwide beginning today, 8 September. Pitching Viscara, UNTV News and Rescue, Paris, France. Visitors to Beijing's Palace Museum have a new tour route and fresh atmosphere. Nina or Emilio tells us what. Beijing's Palace Museum is set to open its western pathway to the public on September 29, ahead of a seven-day national holiday. This would ease crowd pressure on the central axis, at the same time giving visitors a new tour course. The Palace Museum will open three new pathways within this year. The museum's western pathway leads to the former Royal Eye Storage House, where 400 dinners can be served, and a platform opened overlooking the former Royal Park Jinshan. The opening of the western pathway, initially from the Broken Rainbow Bridge, Nuan Hong Kiao, to the Eye Storage House, will be this historically rich area's first exposure to the public in nearly 600 years. According to Shen Ji Shang, curator of the Palace Museum, the Western Pathway is a good option for repeater visitors or even locals who know well the Central Axis route. He added, the Western Pathway is totally different in style, with the most visited three halls, the Hall of Supreme Harmony, Hall of Central Harmony, and Hall of Preserving Harmony because it has shaded trees on both sides. The Palace Museum is to greatly change its exhibition layout over the next four years, giving more prominence to displays of traditional Chinese paintings, calligraphy, and China itself. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. 
A mother and child tandem on UNTV's A Song of Praise Music Festival is now preparing their piece for the said program. Ana Maravilla will tell us why. Cell and her mother Joy are now preparing their composition for a Song of Praise Music Festival or ASO. The mother and child tandem believes they could share to viewers their God-given talents through the song they will create. Uh, nakita ko yung nag uh, sinend sa akin tungkol dito sa asop na to. Um, naramdaman ko kaagad, sabi ko, God, gusto kong sumulat. Gustong gusto ko. Hindi dahil yung premyo ay kasama, kasi sa mga panahon ngayon ang mga naririnig nating awitin ay yung kung ano na lang ang gusto ng tao. Hindi na kung ano yung dapat gawin ng tao. Pwede pa kaming makahikayat ng tao. Masarap umawit, pero masarap umawit para, para sa Diyos. Their life experiences as overseas Filipino workers serves as their inspiration for creating a new song for ASO. Such have also been their inspiration for a masterpiece they created for another contest in Dubai. Paano ang pagkakabo ng awit? Ano, hugot ng buhay, kung ano yung kasalukuyang sitwasyon namin ngayon. As we are inspiring each other. Kumbaga, ibon kasi siya yung pakpako sa buhay. Their composition entitled Inang Ibon won in Dubai Dubai Musikahan, a program by the Philippine Consulate in Dubai that aims to harness the Filipino talents abroad. The mother and daughter tandem songs is about the contribution of Filipinos to national reforms. Ano Maravilla, UNTV News and Rescue, Dubai. How about those elephant boots? They're Fantastic. so cool. Even elephants get pedicures, no? I bet we could share one boot. Yes. Yeah. Happy weekend to our viewers. Happy weekend, guys. Happy, Happy weekend, weekend, everyone. Those are the reasons behind the news. September 9, 2016. I'm Angelo Castro III. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I'm Jerry Alcantara. And I'm Darlene Basingan because we need to know... We will always ask why. Thank you for watching. Why, why news? news?